All right, it's time to look at OBS filters. In the OBS Super User Guidebook, we're gonna break down over 10 video filters that will make your productions look amazing. Let's get into it. What's up guys, real quick, wanna remind everybody you can get a free copy of the OBS Super User Guidebook in the links below. You can pick up a paperback copy on Amazon and don't forget to hit that red subscribe button if you're new here. Only about 10% of our viewers are actually subscribed. It makes a big difference for us and if you wanna see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button and if we can do better, let us know in the comments below. So video filters can make your OBS scenes really come alive. Video filters can be applied to any source. You simply right click the source and you get a list of filters. At the top, you've got your audio filters mainly. And at the bottom, we've segmented them for the video filters. We're gonna talk about video filters in this video, audio in the next. Generally, once you apply a filter, you can name it and you can start to adjust a lot of the parameters that are available. In this video, we're gonna look at some really cool image mask techniques. We're gonna look at applying LUTs and we're gonna look at really the best ways to make your video productions come alive. And we'll use some of these filters in upcoming chapters in the book. And we'll talk about doing virtual sets and green screens and a lot of really fun stuff in this online course. So I've got a camera feed here. This is my main camera feed. And we're gonna start adding some filters by right clicking and clicking filters. Now, as I mentioned, this top one up here is mainly for audio. And then the bottom one down here is mainly for video. So just to help you kind of move along and go a little faster here. The very first one is called applying a LUT. And what a LUT is, is it's a lookup table. And you can actually download a bunch of these, but they come with a few here. It's kind of like a filter. Okay, so it's applied on top of your video file, and then you choose the amount you want that to be applied. So what this is a really cool tool for matching multiple cameras together. Sometimes one webcam can look different than another. It's a little too red, a little too blue. You can add these filters to both of them to kind of just make them both look closer together. So I'm going to turn this LUT off, but I'm going to go down to color correction, which is a little bit more of an advanced tool for adjusting the colors coming into your video. Color correction filter gives you access to gamma, contrast, brightness, saturation, hue shift, and opacity. You can use the gamma adjustment to affect the gray scale, which is essentially the space between full black and full white. You'll see there's a middle range of your image that can be either lifted or lowered as you adjust the slider. You can also adjust contrast to affect the gain, which is used to bring full white and black range either closer together or further apart. Later on in this online course, we'll use the color monitor plugin for OBS. So you'll see exactly what these do, but they're very powerful and important for tweaking your video. You can of course adjust the brightness, which is pretty straightforward, the saturation, which changes the vibrancy of the colors, and then the hue shift, which actually changes all colors in the image. And we'll take a look at all of those, including opacity, which adjusts the transparency of the entire filter's effect. Chroma key is one that we'll check out in a moment here. This one, it can be applied to a color. So you can remove specific colors out of a video feed. You can crop a video feed. So you can actually crop basically spaces off of a feed, but you can crop things into like more of a square or more of a rectangle, however you'd like. If you have the NDI plugin, which we'll talk about in an upcoming video, you can add a filter to make your entire video source available as an IP video output via NDI, and we'll talk about that. One that I do want to try here is called an image mask. And an image mask, what that does is it allows you to take an image, and I'm going to show you the image we have prepared for this. And I have an image mask of a circle. And when we apply that circle, in an image mask and we have the color channel selected, what it does is it makes the entire video source that image, which is really, really cool. A lot of people use this effect. You can do zigzags, you can do anything you want, but this is what an, a circle looks like using an image mask. So very cool way 
to make your webcam look a little bit more snazzy, look a little bit more professional. That's what an image mask does. Now, I'd also like to show you an image mask in the opposite way. So image masks can be applied in a color channel, um, but we can also use it in kind of a subtraction way. So I want to show this way as well. I've got a really colorful, slow moving video here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to apply image mask here, but this image mask, and this is going to be available for download uh, in the links below. This image mask is we're going to do an alpha mask channel instead. And take a look at what this does. So this gives us a really cool animated video, you know, what's going on. So now and I'm going to move this layer up above. We can have like area for a chat room, a lower third at the bottom, but it's now animated and it's very good looking. I'll leave these files in the links below so that you guys can play around with this. But image masks can quickly make your videos much more powerful and good look. We have the ability to a render delay. That's something that you'll learn about in our upcoming slow motion instant replay area. You have the ability to do some scaling and you can scroll text. So that's something we'll show in this video as well. And then the ability to sharpen a video. I really do like to sharpen my videos. I really do. Adding a little bit of sharpness for most camera feeds look really good. Now, if we go back into filters here, the one that I wanted to show was the scrolling text. So let's add some text and we'll go right here. We'll call it scrolling text. And just as an example, hello, we need some scrolling. Let's go ahead and click OK. Now this is our text here and I'm going to fit it into this space in the bottom that we've got kind of that we're building here. There we go. And we'll go ahead and add the scrolling, the scroll option here. Okay. And we'll scroll it this way. And as you can see, now we're starting to scroll the text. And we could do some changes to the speed, et cetera, et cetera. So these filters are a great way to add video and elements to your production. So now we've looked at quite a few of these. We actually, there's one more that I wanted to show, which is a countdown timer. Now this is another file that I'll put in the links below for the course, but essentially I would like to show how to add a color chroma key to effect to this one. So we go to chroma key and essentially it has already decided, okay, this is green and we're just going to kind of adjust some of these options. Boom. Look at how good that looks. That actually looks really good. There's our countdown timer. And we've basically made the green background transparent. So it looks really good as an overlay. That's great for countdown timers. That's great for green screens. And in an upcoming chapter, we will look at how to use this for virtual sets. So that's our overview of video filters. Our next video will be on audio filters. So stay tuned for that one. Boom. Well, we just used video filters to create cool green screen effects, image masks, video overlays, and scrolling text. It can do so much more, especially when we start installing some of the advanced plugins discussed in the OBS super user guidebook. So get the files below, play around with it. That's the best way to learn. And then our next video, we'll go over audio filters before we get into 10 amazing plugins for OBS. I'll see you in the next video.